Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. My name is Thomas and if you are watching this video then chances are you are trying to pick a university. You may just be getting started in the process, you might be trying to get that UCAS application in or you could now be sitting with offers and you're not sure which one to accept. In this video I'm going to go through a few common mistakes people make when picking a university just to make sure that you don't fall into the same traps as those that have come before you. Stick around and we're going to go through a few of these. Location. This is something that people do not give enough weight to and they really, really should. Chances are this is probably going to be your first time moving away from home. If so, how far are you prepared to move from what's familiar? If you're somebody who's likely to get quite homesick, then is moving from Inverness to Exeter going to be the best move for you? It's something you can consider, it's something that's very personal to everybody. So. Take a moment to consider it before you jump for the best ranked course that just happens to be at the other end of the country. But location isn't just about how far away from home you're going to be moving. It's also about the place you're going to be moving to. If you're the sort of person who likes small towns, has grown up in quite small places, do you want to be moving somewhere huge like London or Birmingham or Glasgow? Equally, if you've grown up in a big city and you like that lifestyle, then do you want to be moving to somewhere much smaller, like a town-based university like St Andrews or Aberystwyth? This is something you need to consider because you're not just applying to be part of the university, you're applying to move to the town or city that it exists inside, and that needs to be a good fit for you. And location can be more subtle than just is it a big city or is it a small town? Is the university a campus university or is it more integrated with the place like St Andrews or Cambridge where they own a lot of old buildings? If it is a campus, is that campus in the city centre like Cardiff or Strathclyde? Or is it more on the outskirts of the place like Stirling where you can have a bit of separation between your university campus and the town or city in which you're living now? And finally on location I would be completely remiss if I didn't talk about cost, especially considering the cost of living crisis that we're having at the minute. Cost is something that you really need to consider. In far too many places, the cost of living outstrips a student loan. With this in mind, you need to consider, do I have the financial support from my family that I would need to live here? Or will I need to get a job? If so, are there jobs available here for students so that I could actually realistically get to be able to support myself? And this is where country considerations have to come in as well. Scottish students living in Scotland who go to Scottish universities, we get our tuition paid for us. I think there are also benefits for Welsh students staying in Wales. Cost is always something that should be considered when you're looking at universities. Just because a university has the highest prestige doesn't mean it's necessarily the best place for you. I'd wager that it's normally better to be happy in a place that's a lot cheaper than it is to be miserable in a prestigious place that is very expensive. Okay, moving on from location, let's talk about size, a factor that is far too often overlooked by prospective applicants to universities. The size of a university, or more accurately, the size of the department you are applying to cannot be overlooked. It is a very, very important thing to consider when looking at a university. Now this is not as simple as saying that small departments are bad and large departments are good or vice versa. This is nuanced, this is something that will come down to personal preference, but it's something you need to think about. Okay, let's compare them. Smaller departments. One of their big strengths is that they often have a higher staff to student ratio. What this means is you'll have more staff members per student, so the staff members have more time to spend with each individual student. This can be especially important in your first or second years of the course where you're doing really core stuff because if you've got a lecturer who has to split their time between 100 students wanting help, that's going to be very different in the amount of time they can spend with each individual student than if you have a single lecturer who has 500 students that they need to split their time between. That being said, larger departments have their advantages. For example, larger departments tend to have more varied research portfolios. This can be really useful when you get to your final year projects because you've got more scope, more areas to explore, and chances are you'll find something that is more interesting. That isn't to say that research in small departments is bad, it isn't at all. Because you've got that better staff to student ratio, chances are you will know the academic staff better by the time you reach your final year, which may make finding a supervisor that you work well with that much easier. It certainly has for me. 
And speaking of that familiarity, the advantages of knowing people in the academic world can be really helpful, especially if you want to go into academia. It's also really good for getting good reference letters at the end of it because the staff giving you those references know you so much better than they would in a much larger department. Basically, I cannot give you the answer to this. You're going to have to think about this for yourself and decide, is a big department for me or do I want something smaller? I personally went for a smaller department, but that also went along with having a smaller university in a smaller town, and that was what I wanted. And I really benefited from having a small department, but I know people that are very happy in very large departments at other universities, so it's up to you. Now, my penultimate point is just a short warning to you. Do not just follow your friends to university. You should never pick a university because it is where your friends are going. Or even worse, because it is where your significant other is going. I hate to say it, but it is a slightly unfortunate truth that most people will drift from their school friends or their school, their school age significant others over time. It's just a fact of life. There is a very high likelihood, now I know you are dismissing me right now, that you will drift apart from some of your school friends as you go off to university. Choosing a university that is otherwise not right for you just because your friends are going there is doing nothing but doing yourself a disservice. Pick the university that is right for you and if your friends are really the sorts of people that you care about and you want to stay close to then you'll make the effort to do that even when you're meeting a lot of new people at university. Now, words of warning out of the way, the final thing that I really think you should take into consideration when you're picking a university is the vibes. Vibes or gut feelings or whatever you want to call them are criminally underrated when you're trying to decide where to go for university. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. When I was choosing which university to go to myself, I had real trouble separating my top three choices because they were all really good for different reasons. So Edinburgh had a really good course, massive department with loads of research available, and it, it seemed really good on paper. But then I went to the open day and it, it just didn't feel right. There was something just off about the place for me. The university and how it fitted in with the town. It, it just wasn't really for me. Glasgow, I really, really liked. But there's just there was still something that wasn't quite there with the department for me. I think it just wasn't quite as, I don't know, open and friendly as I was hoping for. Whereas St Andrews, the gut feeling was just there immediately, well, pretty much immediately. Within four hours at the open day, I had completely decided that if I got an offer from St Andrews, that that was what I was accepting. The vibe check is what puts St Andrews on top for me. And this is a process that I'm still doing to this day. I'm currently waiting on PhD offers coming back, and I insisted on going to all of my interviews in person because I essentially wanted to vibe check the university departments and the cities that I'd be considering moving to to make sure they were right for me. And it's been a brilliant thing for helping me order these in my head. Apart from the fact I cannot pick between St Andrews and Cardiff, we're getting off topic. Vibe checks are good to a point. Sometimes you're still paralysed by indecision. So, those are a few things that you need to make sure that you don't dismiss when you're considering universities. Location, size and vibes are far too often overlooked. Don't make those same mistakes that others have. Since you've made it all the way to the end of the video, please do hit that subscribe button, the like button and comment down below if you have any questions. If you're looking for something else to watch, then check out this video here. It's talking about 10 things that you should do before you go off to university. In the meantime though, all I have left to say is thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.